Hi guys, it's Dee and welcome to Dee's Yard. I garden in East Tennessee in Zone 7A and welcome to the June 2023 garden tour. And we're going to start off with what I like to call the Shed Garden. In this area, I chose to just go with the different varieties of coleus and I'm really liking how all the colors are turning out. Next to it, I have this beautiful arborescence hydrangea called Seaside Serenade Bar Harbor. And I really love this hydrangea because it's more compact than the Annabelle hydrangea. In the front, I just dotted in some vinca, and behind that is a strawberry sundae hydrangea that's just getting ready to bloom. For my hanging baskets, I decided to go with a super vina, large lilac blue, and two super bells, tropical sunrise, and lemon slice. And I really love how all those colors are pairing together. I'm sure it's been pretty similar at your house, but late spring, early summer, the temperatures have been fairly cool, so my annuals haven't really put on a lot of growth yet. We're just waiting for the heat to kick in. But for the window basket, I decided to try a new to me super tunia called persimmon. I really like its bright color. And in the middle, I went with a diamond frosty euphorbia. For the back row in the shed, I'm using Mexican petunias, black and blue salvia. And then for the middle ground, I went with a royal cosmo lantana. All the Victoria blue salvia that I've used, I did from seed. The white ones, Veronica, are just coming out of bloom right now. I know I'll cut them back and they'll come back with another flush. Then I have cream and red coleopsis that's new from last year. And then some annual vinca in the front. You'll see I went pretty heavy on the Victoria blue salvia. Honestly, it's just to save money. I can grow them from seed and sometimes even come back for me here in zone 7. You'll see the same pairings on the other side of the shed as well. My other hanging basket on the other side of the shed is the exact same as the other. And I really like how the colors pair together. Moving on to the side of the shed, I have three double play doozy spirea and these things really just bloom. I feel like every single month once they start blooming in the spring, I truly enjoy them. Can never can go wrong with a summer wine nine bark. Love the color up against the shed. Then I have a panicle hydrangea called candy apple. It's just getting ready to bloom. And I just added these three hardy geranium called Roseanne. They're still very small, but they will fill in this entire area. Very excited about adding those to the garden. Now moving on, we're entering what I like to call the perennial border garden. And that just borders my backyard area around my fence. Here's your standard Annabelle Hydrangea, Hydrangea Arborescence, and this is actually one that I did from a cutting. I absolutely love these bee balm. They're called Pardon My Lavender 2. Newly planted, so they definitely have some space around them, but I wasn't sure how they were gonna bloom here, actually getting a lot of shade, but they have them blooming prolifically. I'm very excited about that. Then I have some Pink Potion Veronica that honestly are in too much shade. That's why you can see that they're reaching for the sun. I might end up moving those, but I'm not sure yet. We'll see how they do next year. Panicle hydrangea that's just getting ready to bloom. And just in front of that are two hardy geraniums called Boom Chocolata. There's an opening act blush phlox. Love that beautiful color, especially when it's paired next to the Anthony Water Spirea. Recently I had this fire glow Japanese maple and I love the color that it brings to the side of the garden. A couple blooms left are Ever After Veronica. That soft purple is gorgeous. Silver Mount Armesia in the front. The Price is Right Cornflower and Autumn Fire Sedum. And I love these Meteor Shower Verbena. These are tall Verbena and they are, came back for me from last year, Hardy and Zone 7. 
There's some cat's meow catnip. In the back is a program beauty barrier. And then I have midnight masquerade penstemon. These flame purple garden flocks are so vibrant. Love the color. And I can't wait for all the flocks to open. Salvia Gregory Eye Purple, still doing its thing. It's nonstop blooming all the time. Then I have some Paint of Town Magenta Dianthus, giving out a couple flowers. Yellow My Darling Cone Flyer, so pretty. And then part of my Purple Bee Balm are just getting ready to flush out. And I love the purple paired with the yellow, especially the evergreen Stella Daylilies. Some of the salvia I recently cut back, and then gorgeous purple emperor coneflower. And as you can see, the bees love this plant. On the arbor that I built, I have my Triumph muscadine grapes. I'm looking very forward to them. Again, they're a little bit off to a slow start, but they're super sweet. In my vegetable garden, you'll see I have two rows of tomatoes, all different types and varieties. I do both heirloom and F1 hybrids. In the other rows, we have pumpkins, peppers, zucchini, um, cucumbers, cantaloupe, and watermelon that are off to a little bit of a slow start, especially because of the weather. And then I don't think I'm going to have any corn this year because all of the squirrels is what I believe is digging up all my corn seeds. Back inside the gate, you'll see this bench that I recently restored. I'll make sure to link that video if you're interested. The ponders go crazy for this bee balm called Balmy Lilac. And I love how it pairs with the going bananas daylily. Of course, none of the flowers are facing the camera at this time. On the other side of the bench, there's Arizona Sun Blanket Flower. Very vibrant red. These Victoria White Salvia were also done from seed. I love how that white pairs with the dark foliage of the Wygelia behind it. Fire Fire Peach Sky Yarrow. Very pretty colors. Then there's a kaleidoscope of Bilia with some Miss Manners Obedient plant. These are just starting to flower. I'm really loving how this corner of the garden is turning out. Moving on, on the other side of the Leland Cypress, the first plant is a Purple Pride Beauty Berry. These are my favorite flocks. They're called Opening Act Romance, and it's just about time to start cutting them back and getting ready for the next flush of flowers. I recently added these tall verbena and the pollinators go crazy for it. Behind them is blue fortune agastache. You can see the bees are busy on them. Then I have multiple salvia called playing the blues in here. I'm hoping they come back for me because they are hardy to zone seven. There's a globosa nana cryptomeria. And then my Jane magnolia tree is just having its second flush of flowers. Fire Witch Dianthus. Purple Illusion Veronica. Just about time to cut this one back as well. 
The alliums are just getting ready to bloom. Behind the alliums are Panicle Hydrangea and a Dwarf Crate Myrtle called Pokemoke, and they're both just getting ready to bloom. Then I have three Cheyenne Spirit Echinacea. These were recently planted this year, so they are small. Sparkling Sapphire's Betties are done, and Little Joe Pie Wheat's about to flower. Cloudburst Phlox, and a Queen Nectarine Agastache. Super pretty color, very unique. I love the grass in the back called Apache Rose. This is switch grass. And just starting to bloom right now are the Tuscan Gold False Sunflower. I love them so much, I added some more white wands, Veronica, and I love how that white pairs with the Burgundy Winecraft Black Smoke Bush behind it. I'm waiting for all my Limelight Panicle Hydrangeas to bloom, hopefully soon. There's a String Theory Amazonia, another Agastache called Royal Raspberry. This is a super vibrant pink. And this area is starting to come into its own as well. I'm very excited about how this is turning out. That Arctic Blast that we had last year in late December really did a number on a lot of my butterfly bushes. And this Miss Violet Bullia was one of the few butterfly bushes to come back for me. In the front, there's some beautiful Ever After Veronica. More Fire Witch Dianthus. It's just such an easy, beautiful ground cover. And these Glamour Girl Fox are so unique. There's no other pink in the garden that I think compares. And I think they pair perfectly with the King of the Ages Daylily, which has a gorgeous peachy yellow and pink color. Verbena Homestead Purple doing its thing. And these gorgeous Leading Lady Amethyst Bee Balm are in full bloom right now. Super pretty. And I like how they pair with the Little Joker Nine Bark behind them. There's a Pink Lemonade Baptisia, of course, out of bloom. And the next to that is a little great butterfly bush that I added this year. It's a dwarf butterfly bush and it's waiting for the temperatures to heat up again. Now we're starting to move into a little bit of an edible garden. I have three butterfly bushes, some strawberries, and thyme, and the pollinators go crazy for this thyme. It has such little delicate flowers. In my elevated garden bed, I have some cucumbers, and then behind them are very unique called Aunt Molly's Ground Cherry. I've never planted them before. They're very prolific, but they're almost like little tomatillos, but they're sweet. Then I also have some peppers, some Shoshito peppers, some jalapenos, polbanos, and bell peppers. And then in front of them, I just have some bush beans. And then of course, I can never not show the Orange Rocket Barberry. It always looks beautiful, and I love all the colors, the vibrant green and reds and purple, beautiful. The Japanese maple I have is a blood good. There's a vanilla spice summer sweet, another boom chocolate hardy geranium. And then a lot of people have asked me how my fairy trail bride cascade hydrangea is doing. Here it is. It's doing fine. It hasn't bloomed this year and that's because it blooms on old wood. And we had that tough winter with the Arctic blast back in December. There's also a Radiant Sibilia. White Wedding Hydrangea about to bloom. Then I have two Purple Daydreams. The one on the left is not looking as good as the one on the right. And that's simply because it was in a lot of shade and I recently transplanted it over here to the sun area. I have a couple of Lemon Lime Mandina for a pop of color. And I absolutely love these three shrubs in the front called Pancake Arvavide. They are so fun. That Lemon Lime Mandina brings such a beautiful chartreuse color. Moving on to the Koi Pond Garden. The box one is starting to grow and fill in beautifully. Around the waterfall are some Ogon Golden Variegated Sweet Flag, as well as Sedum. The Pickerel Weed is still blooming.
The water lilies are so fun. Of course, during the daytime, they open up and they're beautiful. There's also some creeping jenny around the waterfall. I use a lot of that in my garden. And there's some gorgeous pink impatience just dotted around as well. I have a couple containers around the koi pond. This one's so fun, it's just elephant ears. Then I also have Super Tuna Minavista White paired with a Senorita Rosalita Clayomi. And I really like this Clayomi because there's no thorns. This is my favorite grass that I have in the garden and it's the Cheyenne Sky Red Switchgrass. In the last container around the koi pond, I use Super Tuna Persimmon again. There's also a Happy Emily Canna Lily but it blooms yellow flowers. Of course, it's not in bloom yet, but I think it's gonna pair perfectly with the petunia. There's a weeping Japanese maple. And then moving on, we're entering the woodland garden. This area has really changed in the last couple years. About a week ago, I planted this golden dragon yew, and the new growth on it has this beautiful golden color. Next to that is an all gold Japanese forest grass, paired with some ground cover ajuga. Scentlandia sweet spire is finished blooming. This hookra is called toffee tart. And I absolutely love the Sterling Moon Begonia. This is hardy to zone seven. A couple Japanese holly ferns have been added to this area. This is a gold heart called Bleeding Heart, not in bloom. And behind that is the guacamole hosta. I keep a lot of my hosta in containers just because I get a lot of bowls and molds. Then I have a variegated cast iron plant a soft crust Mahonia recently added. This hydrangea is called Big Daddy Hydrangea. I didn't get any blooms out of it from the Arctic Blast. Florida Sunshine Elysium brings a big pop of color to the shaded area, followed by the Gold Dust Akuba. Love this hosta called Empress Wu. Another toffee tart Cora Bells that I got on clearance. And then I have a couple Autumn Brilliance Fern added. This host is called Minute Man. And the woodland garden is bordered with some pink impatience. There are two Queen of Hearts Brunera. Silver color is so pretty. An Everell Carrots for another pop of color. Spawn on Lungwort, I have two of them. They are not in bloom right now. But how unique is that foliage? This hosta is called We. Heaven Sent Jacob's Ladder. And then another Mahonia called Marble Mahonia. It was damaged a little bit from the Arctic Blast. Then I have some variegated Solomon seal and this gorgeous plant smells so good. It's called Aphrodite Sweet Shrub. This Tough Stuff Mountain Hydrangea, I haven't got any blooms from it. I might need to move it to more sun. I also have an Orangula Japanese Maple. Another pop of color for the shade garden is called Brigadoon St. John's Wort. This host in the container is called Diamond Lake. Continuing on with the woodland garden is a deer villa called Kodiak Orange. And it'll be a bright orange in the fall. There's a Royal Standard Hosta. And this is indeed a Gatsby Pink Oak Leaf Hydrangea. And the blooms are just getting ready to fade into their pink color. Super pretty. In the middle is a huge snowball bush viburnum. 
And in the front, I have some Japanese anemone called Fall in Love Sweetly. I have another Scentlandia Sweet Spire. And I just recently planted this Legend of the Small Bottle Brush or Father Gilla. Behind that is a Ruby Spice Clethora that will be in bloom soon. In and out of the blooms are Early Bird Columbine. Behind that is another pop of color called Sun King Golden Japanese Spike Nard. And this is my first year planting this and I'm hoping that it just gets bigger and bigger. Here's another Dear Villa. This is called Kodiak Red. Has beautiful red color in the fall. And in this hosta in the container is called Seducer. One of my absolute favorites. Moving on to the front garden. Not much has changed, but I did want to show you some plantings and containers. First, I used some more of the Happy Emily Canna Lily, and I think it pairs beautifully with the Supertuna Visa Jazzberry. Some more Supertuna Jazzberry around the front walk. And the Canna Lilies, I actually keep them every year, and I divide them and put them underneath my house for storage. Then I just have some Heuchera and some Sedum, and there's some pretty Calla Lilies in here. A gorgeous Weeping Japanese Maple, and then on the front porch, I just have three containers. They have Creeping Jenny and Coleus. And all the Coleus in the containers, I take cuttings of them in the fall and overwinter them in the house and then plant them in the spring. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the July garden tour. Bye guys.